if we look at the specific characteristics of a 45 ACP, it has some inherent flaws when compared to the 40 Smith & Wesson and certainly with the 10 millimeter cartridge. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmbleMart.com. I'm very excited to do today's video where we're going to cover the history of the 45 ACP. As soon as you say 45 ACP, I know a lot of gun enthusiasts out there and their mental picture just went to John Moses Browning's 1911 pistol. And there's a very good reason for that. And if you could, as we go forward, I want you to hold on to that mental image because we're going to come back and talk about that later on because it will in fact become the core of our focus. Like all things in the gun world, a lot of innovation is driven by a perceived need. Notice I said perceived, not necessarily a true need. Let's go back to the late 1800s and the Treaty of Paris. That treaty saw that the government of Spain turned over Cuba and the Philippine Islands to the United States. Problem was, the United States and Spain forgot to consult a group of people running around the Philippine jungles called the Moros. The Moros can trace their lineage back to the Ottoman Empire. And their favorite thing to do was get whacked out on cocaine and tangle with the United States Army. The United States Army found out that once you're dealing with those types of people, the 38 Long Colt, which was their issued sidearm caliber, was not very effective at putting those guys down. In fact, there were a lot of eyewitness accounts, even with good shot placement through the lungs, that those guys lived to fight a longer time than made the United States Army comfortable. The United States Army wasn't necessarily playing nice, but they were still having a heck of a challenge with the Moros. Out of that, the Army commissioned a study to figure out what caliber handgun was going to be the most effective. A guy named John Thompson, colonel in the United States Army at the time, yes, that John Thompson who would later go on to invent the Thompson submachine gun in 45 ACP, commonly called a Chicago typewriter for you crime fans out there, and another partner who was a surgeon in the United States Army called Lagarde held some studies in a Chicago stockyard. What initially happened with the Thompson-Lagarde study, as it became to be known, was they shot cows that were alive. Yes, you couldn't probably do that sort of testing today, as well as some horses. Now, it's always been up for debate how many animals were actually used in the course of this testing. You can find data that suggests 11, maybe 13, whatever it was, there was more than a few live cows. And what they did was take calibers like 9mm Luger, 30 Luger, up to 455 Welby, and they would shoot the animals and see what the result was. They also, interestingly enough, hung human cadavers from a rope. And once the cadaver was completely still, they would shoot it with the test subject cartridge. And they would measure the pendulum swing, so to speak, of the cadaver once it was impacted by the bullet. Out of that study, they determined that the 45 caliber bullet ACP hadn't been invented yet, was the minimum that one would need to neutralize a human threat. Out of those findings, John Moses Browning began to develop the 45 ACP cartridge around his Colt 1911 pistol. So, believe it or not, this is a pretty close replica of one of the original Colts. This is not an original Colt, and as you can tell with the skeletonized trigger, and some other features on the gun. This is way more modern, but this is as close as I could find for today's video to simulate that weapon. As the cartridge gained popularity, especially after World War I, where the Americans took it with trench warfare and fared very, very well, it is truly an effective bullet when it relates to stopping people at close range. All through that period of time, the 1911 reigned supreme for obvious reasons. It is a fabulous handgun, ergonomics, and really what makes this guy tick is the trigger press nature of the design. This is truly a superior gun. 45 ACP may not be a superior cartridge. The risk of being controversial and offending people out there, yes, I said it. It's probably just about average in a very above average gun. As time went on, like most things, the 1911 platform began to change. It was updated with modern features. You can tell this is a Sig Scorpion. You got ambi safeties. You got skeletonized triggers that are adjustable for over travel, Picatinny rails, and the cartridge continued to serve very well 
inaccurate guns. Then, as time marched along, they started to shrink them down. This is what's called a commander size series. This isn't quite a true commander because it doesn't have a four and a quarter inch barrel. This is just a slightly over four, but you can tell midsize. And then an officer's model was developed that was even a little more condensed. As we moved into the 1990s, the cartridge, despite being used in several submachine gun variants like MP5s and the what, became polymer, began to rule the world. This is a Glock Model 21 Gen 4, fabulous weapon like most Glocks are, chambered in 45 ACP. Now, significantly, in my opinion, one of the reasons why 45 ACP starts to wane in its effectiveness as far as handguns goes is this is one massive plastic gun. If you don't have the right size hands, this isn't going to work for you. This is a radical departure from the slim ergonomic handle of the 1911. Some people run this gun very well, but across the broad spectrum, maybe not so good. Then I have the privilege, thanks to our friends at the Buffalo Trading Company, to have, in what most people's opinions, are two of the finest 45 ACP pistols ever made that are not 1911s. This is an FNX 45 Tactical, also a wonderful gun. And from CZ, we have the 97B. All steel, of course, hammer functioning gun, lots of other features on this guy, and a tremendous increase in magazine capacity over the 1911. Your average magazine for a 1911 would carry seven or eight rounds, depending on the manufacturer. You get 13 in the Glock, massive firepower as the gun gets bigger and somewhat overcoming one of the deficiencies of the original platform, which was a limited magazine capacity. Away from the guns that have shot 45 ACP, let's specifically talk about this bullet. As you can see here, I know it's been a while for some of us to actually see a 45 ACP bullet up close. This is a 230 grain ball round. That was what the gun was originally designed to function on. And next door to it is a 185 grain jacket at hollow point spear gold dot. If we could, I'd like for us to keep those two numbers in mind as our discussion continues. If we're using a 230 grain ball round, it travels at roughly 800 feet per second and it can deliver somewhere between 350 and 400 foot-pounds of energy onto the target. Yes, 45 ACP is an inherently slow traveling bullet with a lot of mass behind it. Interestingly enough, and this is where I think the 45 ACP argument starts to go on top of itself, is this guy at 185 grains produces significantly more energy even than the 230 grain jacket at hollow point because there's an increase in speed. Back to the mental image I hope you still have in your mind of the 1911. At the time it was developed, it was true. It was probably one of the more powerful handgun calibers on the market, certainly that you could find in an auto loader. However, that is no longer the case. For instance, if we look at the specific characteristics of a 45 ACP, it has some inherent flaws when compared to the 40 Smith & Wesson and certainly with the 10 millimeter cartridge because 40 Smith & Wesson is an equal combination of high speed bullet like a nine, heavier weight bullet like a 45. It sort of marries the two. On top of that and stopping power is the 10 millimeter cartridge, which has more power at 100 yards than a 45 ACP does at the muzzle. If you really wanted a substantial increase in power, say over the nine millimeter, why select a 45 ACP with a limited magazine capacity and some ballistic deficiencies compared to some other choices? I personally believe in past, present, and future that the 45 ACP is an effective bullet. Of course it is. That's why it's been around so long. But a superior bullet, I find no evidence to suggest that's true. Keeping in mind, this is just my personal opinion based on reading lots of studies and direct observations that other companies that make ammunition have actually studied or published themselves. So 45 ACP is popular because of this. 
in my humble opinion, not because it has some magical ability to stop zombies or even cracked out Moro Filipinos, which by the way, one of the things often forgotten in history is 45 ACP wasn't around during that period of time. It was developed later. In fact, the war was pretty much over by the time the ACP debuted. So you hear talk to a lot of people in this business that will tell you that thing has dispatched how many Filipinos? Completely incorrect in the mischaracterization of what went on. It truly was an upgraded in power for the day, but the end say in stopping power for this day? I don't think so. Thanks for your time and attention. I really appreciate your comments and don't be afraid to like and subscribe.